Hi, my name is Tina and I'm a learning advisor with the University of Westminster and with this video I'm going to be talking about punctuation and academic writing. So our workshop objectives today are to understand the importance of punctuation in your writing. You are also going to revise punctuation symbols and their uses and you are going to check punctuation use in your own work. So my question is, do you think punctuation is important? Now I'm going to show you an example. Dear John, I want a man who knows what love is all about. You are generous, kind, thoughtful. People who are not like you admit to being useless and inferior. You have ruined me for other men. I yearn for you. I have no feelings whatsoever when we are apart. I can be forever happy. Will you let me be yours, Gloria? Now, I am going to show you the same letter with the same words using different punctuation and see how the meaning changes. Dear John, I want a man who knows what love is. All about you are generous, kind, thoughtful people who are not like you. Admit to being useless and inferior. You have ruined me. For other men I yearn. For you I have no feelings whatsoever. When we are apart I can be forever happy. Will you let me be yours, Gloria? So as you can see, we have the same words, different punctuation, and so different meaning. So punctuation really impacts meaning. Try having a read of this text. So I'm not going to attempt this. I'm going to let you have a read. So t pause the video now. What is missing from that text? Complete the quiz. Now, what is missing is punctuation, obviously. So capital letters, names of institutions, certain institutions are capitalized, certain places. Um, you haven't got any commas or full stops in the original. So there are quite a few things missing. And the reason I didn't attempt to read it is because it would have been extremely difficult to follow, to understand and to really gain real meaning from it. So let's revise punctuation symbols and their uses. So you can use a comma to create a pause, to separate ideas in a sentence. You can use a semicolon to create a break, but to recognize connection of ideas. You can use a colon to connect two sentences thematically. You can use a full stop to create the end of a sentence. You can use an apostrophe to indicate ownership or missing letters. Now, using a comma um, is useful if you want to separate words in a list. For example, I went to the shop to buy apples, bread, chocolate and cake. You can also use commas to separate parts of a sentence. Moreover, comma, there are additional benefits to a plant 
lowercase diet. So here we have a comma to separate the first word from the body of the sentence to indicate that this idea is additional to previous ideas. You can also use commas to separate two parts of a linked idea. So, for example, many scientists believe in evolution, comma, although some are trying to disprove Darwin's theory of evolution. You can also use a comma to separate a final phrase, which is an afterthought. For example, I've always enjoyed running, comma, except on Sundays when all I want to do is sleep. So, semicolons. Okay, so we can use semicolons to link sentences which are closely related. For example, the sea was loud and brash. Semicolon. Mina had to shout to be heard. So here, if we had put a full stop, this full stop would have detracted from why Mina had to shout. Okay, a comma would not make enough of a break to allow the reader to make sense of these two ideas. So we have used a semicolon. Now, another way to use a semicolon is to link sentences that are in opposition. For example, the exam was very difficult, semicolon, nonetheless, most of the class passed. In the example above, the set of words after the semicolon must be able to stand as a sentence on its own. Now, another way to use a semicolon is to separate ideas in the list. Some departments are involved in a project, including math, semicolon, science, semicolon, technology, and business. Now, <clears throat> using a colon is useful to introduce a list. For example, the participants in this presentation were colon, Sarah, Julika, Tayo, and Dom. To link two sentences thematically, you can also use a colon. So the English dissenters were a group of radicals who fought for their political rights, colon, they were responsible for free trade, secular educational institution. So these two parts of a sentence connect um, thematically. Um, <clears throat> they also exist separately, but by connecting them with a colon, the reader is led from one idea to the next. You can also use colons to draw out conclusions. Arts and humanities make important contributions to culture, colon. To not teach them is to deny future generations their educational rights. Here, what is said in the first sentence is contextualized by what is said in the second. To introduce a quote, we can also use colons. So, for example, Jackson, 1998, states this was the same for the second sample, colon, quote, our findings indicated decreased positive mood levels in participants in group two, end quote. <clears throat> Okay, so the apostrophe has two functions. So it shows letters are missing, which is also known as a contraction. It also indicates ownership, which is also known as possession. So for contractions, when letters are missing in a word, the word becomes shorter and the apostrophe is used to show where the missing letters belonged. For example, I am becomes I'm. 
they will becomes they'll, they would becomes they'd. Contractions are used in, in informal writing, not in academic writing. Now, possession, um, <clears throat> we use apostrophes to show that something belongs to something else. So, for example, the cat's food means that the food belongs to the cat. The cat's collars means the cat owns more than one collar. The cat's bed means the multiple cats own one bed. The cat's beds mean multiple cats have one bed or more than one bed each. So the apostrophe usually become, uh, sorry, comes before the S if the subject is single. So for example, the cat. And the apostrophe comes after the S if it is plural. Okay. So what have you learned? Now, different academic fields tend to gravitate toward certain types of punctuation. This activity is meant to help you get a sense of writing conventions in your field. You can start by reading <clears throat> through a portion of an article you have referenced in the past. So if you have the PDF you can download the article in, you can use the search function on PDF to look up these various types of punctuation. So for example, you can ask yourself, what is the most common use of each kind? Does this generalize to the field as a whole? Did you know this already or is it new information? And <clears throat> once you're done, open the writing project you are currently working on. Use the search function to look up these various types of punctuation in your work. So if you have to translate or transfer your Word document into a PDF, you should. Um, <clears throat> so is each instance used correctly? Is each instance used according to disciplinary convention? Um, choose a couple of sentences of your own you have found to be problematic and revise them for punctuation use. So thank you for um, clicking on this video. We are the academic learning development team and we have a range of resources such as videos, guides, workshops and appointments.